Here's something I'm always asked about beverages, right? Which drinks are acceptable on a plant-based diet? Which drinks are okay when it comes to slimming down? Frankly, folks, I'll save both you and I some time on this here. I'll cut to the chase. Nothing compares to water. Why? Number one, integral from a hydration perspective, quite obviously. Number two, essential to our health and well-being. Number three, from a calorie point of view, totally unrivaled. If you don't like the taste of water right now, two bits of advice. Number one, give it time. It's amazing how your taste buds, your palate can actually change when you give it the opportunity to do so when you turn away those very highly flavored very rich beverages let's say number two throw in some stuff to make it taste good a couple of citrus slices might do the trick for you some mixed berries some fresh mint those can really add some spice so to speak how much water should you drink every single day most health institutions seem to advise around two liters per day shooting for two liters per day for the average adult does that mean that's appropriate for you personally not necessarily number of variables such as body weight and uh, exercise levels of course these are the fundamental uh, variables that play a role in this sort of thing. So you need to think about that for you personally, but I would say as a rule of thumb, it's quite wise to shoot for around two liters per day if you're an adult watching this video. Beyond water, I'm always asked about tea by my fellow Brits. Is tea acceptable? Tea generally is acceptable. Yeah, absolutely. It's still something that can be part of a healthy and weight loss encouraging diet. I would strongly urge you to move towards more of those herbal teas such as chamomile and whatnot and green tea that has a little bit of caffeine, but move in that herbal tea uh, direction anyway, ginger tea and whatnot, that's probably a good rule of thumb. I suppose in many cases, it depends what you top these things with. What are you having with the tea? What are you having in your coffee? Coffee is a different question entirely and that's a different beast and that's a rabbit hole that I should probably reserve for another video. Although frankly, it's not my wheelhouse because I'm not a big coffee drinker and my clients don't tend to be either. Either. I mean, the jury for me is still very much out on coffee. There's a lot of science that goes either way on this. There's also a whole debate about filtered, unfiltered, decaffeinated, and so on that makes it a bit of a quagmire. Certainly for neurological conditions, it has been proven several times that coffee can be pretty helpful, pretty beneficial. That isn't something that affects most people though. So for the vast majority of us, something that I don't think is essential to a healthy diet. In fact, I think there are lots of adverse effects of caffeine being something that's very notable there. But again, could you have a coffee a day and still lose weight and still be quote unquote healthy? Yeah, of course you could. It depends what else you're doing over the entirety of a day, I suppose. And what else are you adding to that coffee? Are you having a bunch of creamers and sugars and this and that? Depends what you're having with it. If you're talking about a bit of tea or coffee with some oat milk, brilliant, wonderful. I don't want to change you from doing that. I think that's, I don't want to stop you rather from doing that. I think that's wonderful. If a client comes to be doing that, I'm going to assess the situation, but usually that's absolutely fine. That's most certainly something that's acceptable okay so that would be my stance coffee's a tricky one but that would be my stance on those typical hot beverages something like hot cocoa or hot chocolate yeah you can do a quote unquote healthy version of it but most people aren't doing that so i would say as a rule of thumb it's probably a no-go smoothies and juices they're a good option i personally love kombucha it's amazing as well in terms of what it can do for the gut microbiome the gut flora there too of course so check out kombucha and it doesn't come with a crazy amount of calories which is something that's a metric that a lot of people talk about for weight loss. It isn't everything with weight loss, uh, but as I say, it's a good metric to measure the effectiveness of certain foods and drinks by. So kombucha, very low in calories, good from a weight loss perspective, also great from a health perspective too, of course. My, I suppose my overall thesis on this, or rather my overall conclusion on this, is it depends what you have this drink with. Tea, coffee, yet yeah, can be part of a healthy and weight loss encouraging diet. What are you having with it? That's my challenge for you guys to think about. If you can, if you're hardcore like myself, stick with water. A lot of people ask about alcohol. Quite obviously, that's a no-go from a health perspective. How much can it affect weight loss results too, of course? Depends how often you're having it, what sort of alcohol you're having. Again, there's a number of questions here. Generally, we want to eliminate it, don't we? Of course, I'm not going to advise on this channel that you have lots of alcohol. That would be absolutely potty from both a weight loss perspective and a health perspective. It can also drive you, even if you just have one drink from time to time, it can drive you maybe that evening that you're drinking, that you have a glass of wine, to maybe make poorer food choices as well. It seems to be that beer is something that does that anyway for people. So yeah, it's not necessarily just the alcohol itself that's the problem. It's the indirect effect that having alcohol can have. 
on not number one your biochemistry but also the chemical release and whatnot and the hormonal changes that happen in the body when you consume alcohol especially on a regular basis so think about the indirect impact of the alcohol itself you might be thinking oh it's just one drink but what does that lead to who does that make you become what other bad habits does that invite in to your daily routine something to think about there i think but yeah alcohol quite obviously a no-go okay some of those spirits in terms of the calorie density and whatnot they're much more advantageous from a weight loss point of view if we were to be objective about this than something like beer and lagers and ciders and whatnot but I don't necessarily want to advise you guys to go out and drink a, a, a bunch of spirits either so that's certainly not what I'm recommending but yeah objectively we can still rank order things there if you are going to a social event grab a ginger beer grab an apple tizer grab some cloudy lemonade or something like that um, so you've got something there that isn't just plain old bland old water and I think that's a very very good compromise once in a while anyway so that's my advice on beverages hope this helps folks. See you in the next video. Thanks.